Hi, this is Eric with Sweat to Details, and today I'm going to do a little demonstration on what not to do when you're polishing paint on a car. I see a lot of videos online that talk about perfect technique and they're really making cars look great. I wanted to try something a little different, actually destroy a car hood and uh, see how long it takes basically. We're going to do this Mythbuster style. I'm going to take out all the variables of the paint. We're going to measure the thickness of the paint. We're going to see the condition of the paint. And then we'll find out what the temperature of the paint is. So let's give it a shot. All right, you can see my test hood here. I do not suggest doing this with anything that you like. So we'll use one of my old PDR hoods. You can see it's pretty beat up. And you can really see the overall condition of this thing is terrible. Lots of crow's feet, lots of random scratches. It, it is a hot mess. On a side note, I believe this is a Honda. And this seems to be pretty typical with Honda paint. After a while, they'll develop what, what we call crow's feet. And that's what it looks like. It's little fractures in the clear coat. And these fractures go all the way through. And a funny thing about Honda paint is it's actually the softest paint. A lot of detailers talk about it. It's, it's really easy to correct, which is nice, but it's also easy to burn through. So if you see this on your vehicle or starting to develop, there's really nothing you can do about it. Except for a respray, of course. So you can see the condition is awful. Then we'll look at the thickness of the paint. Have my little reader here first section 122 micros so that means you may have 60 micros of actual clear coat to work with and that's actually a pretty decent amount of paint a typical new vehicle will be between 100 micros and 140 150 micros I actually own a Mazda and it's probably the worst paint I've ever seen on a new vehicle it's 80 micros and it really makes a big difference with chipping and everything else I can notice it get beat up a lot easier than normal paint would. Now we'll check the temperature just to get that variable out. I'm in my basement so it's nice and cool so this probably won't be part of uh, the variables too much. You can see we're, we're around 60, 62. Nice and cool, perfect temperature for polishing paint. If you're in the sun you're obviously going to be a lot hotter especially on a color like this and you run the risk of burning the paint. I think that we'll probably burn through the clear coat before we actually generate enough heat to burn this paint. And you can see my boxes that I have drawn here. We're going to start this one at 10 seconds with a rotary. Then we'll go down to this one, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and then 30 seconds. And what we'll be using today this is Lake Country's Hybrid Foam Heavy Cutting Pad. We'll do this with a rotary, my DeWalt. Then we'll do it with a flex forced action. And then we'll attempt it with a cyclo, but I doubt we're going to get too much with the cyclo. And you'll see my rotary over here has got this really tiny pad on here and I know a lot of people think that looks funny on such a huge machine but the great thing about this pad is it fits these hybrids just perfect I think the hybrid backings four inches and this is three and three quarter so it fits on there and I can use the same pad that I use on my rotary on my four inch backing plate for my flex so that's enough talking let's get some action all right let's do some work you can see I've Prime my pad, got it squarely on there. I'm going to show you the setting I'm using. This is typical for compounding. You'll, you typically go between 600 to 1,000. Sometimes I've gone up to 1,200 on really bad, but I'm going to, I'm going to do 1,000. I think that's a pretty fair estimate. And you can see the amount of polish we're using, a little less than nickel each spot. Let's do some work. Make sure I Throw the cord over my shoulder so I don't scratch this nice hood. Got our timer ready. Let me smear it in a little bit. We're going to let this sit here for 10 seconds. 
You let me know when it's done. Ten. Well, you can see the pad doesn't look like it broke through. Let me wipe that up and see what we got off 10 seconds. Oh, it looks a little dull. I definitely see something happening there. Well, not too bad. Perhaps a little faded. That might actually be a little burning. All right, let's try 15 seconds. All right, we're going to move on to 15 seconds. Mark the product in and go. <laughs> Nothing really came off there. I will be surprised if this didn't do any damage. See a little bit coming off there. It might just be dirt on the hood. Well, doesn't look too bad. Looks like 15 seconds might be a fail also. We'll move it up to 20 seconds and uh, see what happens. Ready for 20. All right, time for 20. Too bad. Nope. Got some definite fading there. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up or not. That was 20 seconds. Just a little bit on the outer edges. Not too bad. Really am surprised. You're always taught to move these things. You would never leave this sitting there for 20 seconds at a time. Reading 116, I think that panel was about 120, so four microns, no burning. Not bad. All right, we're moving on to 30 seconds now. Terrible technique, leaving it one spot. Pressure I'm using is pretty much medium, just enough to keep it in one spot. So, 1,000 RPMs, here we go.
30. I don't see anything. Let's see what we got. This is kind of like Christmas morning here. I gotta say, I'm really surprised. We're gonna have to make a couple more X's and knock this time up a little bit because I'm not stopping until I hear see some color coming out of here 98 microns I mean that's this panel was a little bit thinner than the other ones to begin with that's still not bad we are working on a flat panel so I don't want to give anybody the idea that you can leave your rotary polish polisher sitting on a panel that has a body line in it because if you were working next to something that had a rigid line next to it, it would most certainly burn the paint off. Being a flat panel, that's able to move it out a little bit more, but I'm still really surprised by this. All right, I guess we're going to hit 40 seconds. Let's try. Ready? All right, I just want to show the temperature of the paint because we did check the temperature on the 30 second panel and it did rise about 20 degrees. It was only 85 but it, we started around 60 and let me go ahead and temp this one out you can see we're at 67 so we'll see exactly how much warmer it gets doing this technique and 40 seconds mark a little product in there thousand rpms medium pressure go smoke you see that pads actually had some smoke coming off on it wow let me quick quick temperature on this 173 that would damage your paint Is a hot panel I think we have finally hit pay dirt you can definitely see that ring right there and I don't think that's actually breakthrough from the clear that is a burn we have burnt paint the Eagle has landed we're finally successful check the thickness 111 you can see that the clear coat is actually still intact but we have damaged the clear coat layer with too much heat from the rotary I left a nice little burn in there the whole outer edge you can see it's a lot more faded the magic number 45 seconds We'll start with 30 on the flex and we'll work our way up and see how long it takes to burn paint with a flex. I know a lot of people say it's not even possible. We'll make that possibility happen today. All right, we're gonna start with the flex. You can see I put the same Lake Country hybrid pad on there. This is their heavy compounding pad. I'm gonna start with 30 seconds. You saw it smoking 170 degrees with the rotary at 40 seconds. So we'll, we'll drop it down 10. Let me get our initial read here. Got 69 degrees. 
that's probably residual heat coming off of the pad that we just did over here because it was registering 62 when we first started. Take a quick paint reading. 122. Let's see what kind of damage we can do using the flex forced action. 30 seconds, medium pressure. And I'm gonna move this up so you see the speed six, which is its highest setting. No breakthrough. The pad is definitely hot, but it's not smoking like it was earlier. Take a quick temperature read. 111. If you remember, at 40 seconds with the rotary, we're at 100, uh, 173, I believe. This is 10 seconds less. Still pretty hot. Let's see if it's hot enough to burn it. see anything super obvious with it looks like a little bit of a halo on the outer edges which we could probably even attribute that to the poor condition of the hood to begin with it really doesn't look too bad here's the halo I was referring to but I don't really think that has anything to do with this experiment not bad, 111 degrees, 30 seconds. Let's move this sucker up to 40 seconds and see what we can do. All right, as you can see, we've moved to a 40 second section. Our initial temperature reading, 67. Initial paint thickness, 142, that's pretty thick. 101. All right, that's probably more realistic. A little thin over here. Mix it in. Speed setting of six. The flex is highest setting. Medium pressure, 40 seconds. And begin. color transfer pad is definitely hot see the temperature of the panel Wow 119 at the exact same time with the rotary 170 plus so that is a huge difference wipe it up Let's see what we got I think I see a little bit of a halo here, so this is probably damaged. I 
think we're sitting right around 100 micros, 92. So that, that took off quite a bit of paint. You're thinking four to six microns there. That's pretty pretty good amount. I honestly don't see any burnt paint though. Can't remember what the temperature was. Was it 111? So at 111, you may be okay. Took quite a bit of paint off, but I don't see any telltale fading marks of burnt. So just to cover our bases here, we're going to reset and we're going to hit 50 seconds with the flex. All right, we got the 50 second section. Checking the temperature, 69. The hood's definitely starting to warm up a little bit. Let's go ahead and check the thickness of the paint. 113, 111. It's a little thicker than that last section. Flex, forced action, Lake Country Hybrid Pad, speed setting of 6, which will relate to 480 RPMs, medium pressure, and we're using Meguiar's 105 compound in case I did not mention that earlier. And go. Well, let me show you the pad since we've been doing that. Nothing really there. Warm to the touch. And we'll take the temperature. 140. It's 50 seconds. 140. I think we may have finally reached the point of paint damage. Oh yeah, we took quite a bit of paint off of there. And I definitely see some damage right around that area. I'm not sure if that's picking up on the camera or not. It's not as obvious as what was left with the rotary, but it's definitely there. So I think at that point we can call 50 seconds a little too much for the flex. Now just for fun, let's do the cyclo. Got the cyclo hooked up. Obviously I can't use the five and a half inch Lake Country pads. I do have brand new Cyclo yellow pads, which are their most aggressive paint cutting pads. Still using the Meguiar's 105. Got a new section here. Let's go ahead and take the temperature, or sorry, the uh, paint thickness. That can't be right. 122. 118, so we're looking around 120, 115 area. Temperatures run around 68. Now, the biggest difference between this machine and the two machines that we used before is the free floating spindle on the Cyclo. That pretty much makes this machine dummy proof, but I'm gonna put that theory to a test today and see if I can be that dummy to actually burn paint with the Cyclo. Um, the other two machines we had, they're forced rotation, so no matter how hard you push down, it's still turning. With these, when you push down really hard, these aren't gonna turn anymore, they're just gonna vibrate basically. So it, it's built as a dummy proof machine. I use this machine for a lot of things. It's great for putting a nice little shine on paint, not for making any type of correction but we're gonna do this for two minutes. 
We saw the temperature 69 degrees. We'll see what kind of damage we can make. All right, we got our two spots here. Two minute test. And go. Two minutes. Pad's pretty clean. It looks like that cycle was actually enough to uh, work the product to the point that it's supposed to be worked. You can see it's, it's actually dusted up properly. Well, I'm really surprised at this. 148, I never thought that we would get that hot with this machine. But actually, that looks pretty good. So maybe that's how you're supposed to use a cyclo, who knows? We'll wipe the product off. Like I said, I, I think I've done this a few times with the Cyclo as far as trying to compound paint with it and it never really looks right. So it's not something you're normally gonna do. But it's still pretty interesting just to see if you can cause any type of damage at all with this machine. That is the Pro version, so I had it turned up to six. Paint actually looks pretty good. 116 microns, 123, negligible difference. We, we may have taken off half a micron, maybe one micron off this hood. Two minutes with the Cyclo. Like I said, the Cyclo is really just a paint polisher. It's not really much of a paint corrector. But the great thing about the Cyclo is I, I can put that in the hands of my newest employee, put him on the car, and, and know for sure that he's not going to damage anything, which we've definitely proved right here. Because even the dumbest guy you find is not going to leave it in one spot just turning like that. And just from this spot here, I mean, it looks, looks okay to me. It doesn't look damaged. Two minutes in one spot. Temperature went up to 140 degrees, which I'm even surprised at that. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to burn paint with X. I really don't even think it's possible. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.